Is the energy feeling a little heavy lately? Things feeling a little dark, lonely, maybe a little decrepit around your neck of the woods? Don't worry, that's just mother nature. Welcome to the dark half of the year. Today we're gonna to talk about the dark half of the year and why observing the fact that we are in a shift of seasons right now is actually gonna do wonders for your mental health, further connect you with your witchcraft practice, and just understand the ebbs and flows of nature a teensy bit more, so stay tuned. Hey everyone, it's Anya with the Season of Anya, and welcome to my channel where together we are building a community of witches and yogis and all sorts of spiritualists through understanding and diving deep into the practices of yoga, magic, and witchcraft. So for starters, when is the dark half of the year? There are a couple schools of thoughts on this, so I, I'm just gonna give you a quick little teensy trailer on all of them. Most people observe the transition of the dark half of the year right around the autumn equinox or the Mabon season, which is typically around the 19th, 20th, or 21st of September. This goes all the way through the, well, the light half of the year in Ostara, which is in March, spring equinox. Now the other school of thought is that it actually starts more so in the summer solstice, so like 19th, 20th, 21st of June, all the way until the winter solstice, which 19, 20, 21st of December, because that's actually when the days officially get uh, shorter and the nights get longer. So take what resonates with you. I've even heard some people say that the dark half of the year starts with the kickoff off Samhain on October 31st. Either way, just take what resonates. Now we know when the dark half of the year is, but why does it even matter? Why, why the need to announce it? Well, simply put, when we are working with nature-based practices, such as witchcraft, for example, we need to observe the patterns of nature. It's not so much that someone is telling us we have to, but that's how we understand how nature works. Shocking, I know. So with observing the shift in nature, light half of the year, spring and summer, basically, right? Things are growing, things are blooming, things are manifesting. It's, it's a time of liveliness for sure. Now, dark half of the year, we're in a time of death. <laughs> Just keeping it real. But what does that mean? Why, why does that actually matter? Well, yeah, even though as humans we are sophisticated, definitely, you know, let's say compared to a cute little bunny rabbit, we are still a part of nature. So in order to understand ourselves and our habits, our nuances, we work with the habits, rather the patterns, I should say, of nature as well. That way we can understand the changes within ourselves, why we ebb, why we flow. For me personally, this is how witchcraft completely changed my scope and my um, ideals of, of my mental health. So we're going to break this down in a couple different brackets. That way it hopefully makes a little more sense and you can apply it to your personal practice, your spiritual practice, and just your overall mental health practice, right? It is a practice, I'm just saying. So with that, point number one, what is happening in nature? As we enter the dark half of the year, especially the first month, it can actually be a bit jarring, a bit of a sobering moment, because what's going on? We know what's ahead, winter, right? We've been harvesting our crops all summer, and now we have our reserves, we have our storage, we have our, we have our keep to hopefully last us through winter. Winter is tough. It is a time of going inward. It is a time of changing the pace. In modern times, this is a bit difficult for us because we have so many modern luxuries that disconnect us from this change in lifestyle, if you will. And that's what's important about observing these patterns of nature. We can't always be energetically in one state. We are constantly shifting. We are constantly moving. And if we don't adapt, we fall off. Winters are hard, things die. The trees die off a little bit. All those beautiful annual flowers die off. Things are dying. Even, you know, uh, people, influenza. This is when we get hit hard. Tough times are coming. Now this isn't trying to instill a doom and gloom mentality and oh my God, we're all gonna die. No, but if we take a step back and, and observe what's going on, we're able to better connect with ourselves. So in reference to nature, it doesn't mean, oh my God, everything's dying, dead, and, and we're all gonna die. No, but this is a time for slowing down. The trees, yeah, the leaves died, but they're still there. They're maybe not as pretty as they, you know, once were, but they'll be back, they're coming. Same thing with the bears, right? They go inwards for the winter, they're they're gonzo. See you in the spring, I'll be back when, when 
when things are a little brighter. There is a shift in patterns is what I'm really ultimately getting that. Which brings me to my next point too on a mental health stand. Why does seasonal depression exist? I don't necessarily think seasonal depression is just linked to the fact that you live in a colder climate. Even here in San Diego, I'm a hairstylist, so I talk to a lot of people and it's it's amazing. Everyone is just going and feeling through this heavy energy. Me, myself, it's like, oh my God, all of my deepest fears and, and worries are all coming to the surface and I'm just like, blah, what is wrong with me? Nothing's wrong. We're just shifting. To appreciate the good, we gotta sit with the bad for a little bit too. It's just what it is, it's just life. In order to appreciate life, we got to appreciate death. You can't ignore it. A lot of times, especially in a mental health standpoint, we are constantly go, 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 because we don't want to sit with our worries. We don't want to sit with our problems. We just want to ignore them. We just want to keep sitting in that, in that uh, solar energy, right? That fire energy. As much as I love that energy more than anyone else, that's not balance. I posted another video about this, but this is very much in lines of dark divine energy, dark moon magic. But with that said, this time of year, it is prevalent in our lives for the next six months, give or take. Now this doesn't mean that we are doomed to be depressed and miserable, no. But if these feelings are coming upon us, it's okay. Give yourself permission to feel. But it's all about navigating that flow of how to feel those emotions, how to sit in that energy without it letting over encumbering you. In terms of understanding and navigating mental health this time of year, think of it more so as how we can change our habits, our patterns, and our behaviors, and even just our understandings of who we are to comfort us during these times. Dark isn't bad, dark just is. Learning how to simply accept the dark being ambivalent to the dark is what's going to help us during these moments of maybe a little bit of crisis, a little bit of uncertainty, a little bit of stress, whatever. Let's just say it for what it is, depression. So I'm also going to put this into a point for my yoga witches. So we have yang, which is that fiery energy, that passion, that driving force, the sun. It's that very masculine energy of doing, doing, doing. That, that season is over. Now we are in yin. Yin is actually dark. If we look at the yin yang symbol, yin yang symbol, the, the yin, the feminine energy is actually a dark energy. We are sitting in the darkness. It is, a, it is dark because it's still. And with that, it's dark because it is a, it's a sense of heaviness. Yin is a time for rest. We are replenishing right now. Same with nature. That's why the bears go hibernate in the winter because they are replenishing. They are, they are saving their reserves for a better time. That's okay. So this leads me to my next point in our practice of magic and witchcraft where this isn't necessarily a time for manifesting. Interestingly enough, since we are more in the lunar energies, this is a great time for magic. This is a, actually a great time for spirituality as well. Just not so much of a manifesting energy. If you really have it within you to do so, by all means, go for it. I don't make the rules. I'm just letting you know what works for me and what seems to be the general trend of this time. For a magical practice, this is a great time of looking inward. Lots of introspection, lots of divination, and lots of just kind of connecting with divinity. I know a lot of witches who actually find this time of year very strong for their magical practice because of the lunar energies being so present. So in a nutshell, if things are feeling a little bit heavy, if things are feeling a little bit funky, that's okay. We're in the dark half of the year. These energies are present. They're with us. Embrace them, acknowledge them, but don't sit into it for too long. Yes, heavy emphasis on rest, but still find that balance of pushing when we need to. We are still alive after all. We ain't dead yet, so we got to keep living. We got to find our purpose, but... If there are times and days which we feel off and we are feeling just a bit heavy, that's okay too. Use it as a time to look inward. Some winters are longer than others, but I promise you the sun will be back soon and we will find that spark and fire once again. Thank you guys so much for watching and subscribing to the season of Anya. If you have any thoughts or feedback about the dark half of the year, I'd love to hear about it. How do you connect? How do you push through? What, what patterns change for you? Share with the community, that way we can grow and learn together. All right, everyone, thank you so, so much for watching. I will catch you on the next one. So much love and gratitude to you all on this journey.